Now this is the way the world should be. There wouldn't be any wars. There wouldn't be any strife. Or if there was, it could be settled in a peaceable manner in a handshake. And that's the original American way. And I believe that way is still there, however remote at present time. Now, I'm going to sum up this talk and mention an overview of the alien agenda. The alien agenda is completely decimate the planet to take the remaining human subjects as slaves, and the aliens would use this planet for their own means. Number one, this cannot be allowed to happen. The world takeover plans of the New World Order, a direct carbon copy blueprint from Adolf Hitler's routine of 1933 to 1938, must not be allowed to happen. That includes the name, the New World Order. That was purposely used, folks, because most of us have been lazy. We have not read our history, and I'm talking to you because I'm one of them. We have not read our history books. Things have been omitted. Throw out basically what you've learned. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to re-educate each one of yourselves and ask the unexpected of your public officials, of the people around you, your teachers. I'm not asking you to question authority. I'm asking you to question the teachers of this authority. Is this right? Is this law correct? If a law, one of the best statements to ever come out of the mouth of any human being, believe it or not, was, I think, by an incredible black man in the name of Jesse, not Jesse Jackson, but it was uh, Martin Luther King, excuse me, said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That should be a motto that we live by. Not so much for the man who said the motto, but I'm sure George Washington said something similar. Who said, an uninformed populace is a populace in slavery. Now, our founding fathers had the unique gift 250 odd years ago, 200 to 250 years ago, of looking far in advance, seeing, laying out the groundwork of this wonderful two, two pieces of paper government we've got, the Bill of Rights and the United States Constitution, laying it out for all time. It is the best government probably since time immemorial, maybe the best ever. If we are to, by the way, every freedom that we have must be fought for continuously. You don't need to pick up a gun to fight for something. You need to pick up your mouth. You need to pick up your brain and read a book. You need to pick up your mouth and say, and when you hear somebody say, well, I believe in gun control, and you say, no, I don't believe in gun control, because guess what? You take away that right. What other rights am I going to be missing later on? Now, with gun control. <laughs> gun control. There's a certain few people, generally a 1% to 2% minority of people, that are totally irresponsible, criminal, use the gun improperly, etc., etc. I'm not talking about those kind of people. There are always going to be those kind of people, at least for the foreseeable future. The average person that owns a gun has prudence, has conscious thought of the knowledge of right and wrong, can and is able to defend itself, herself, himself against foreign and domestic terrorists, so to speak. Now, gun control is an attack on your rights if it is allowed to fully comply and go through. All of your freedoms will be removed within a 10-year period after the last element of gun control. 
so the attack of any right or the removal of any existing right is an attack and affront on every one of us in this room and should not be tolerated that's that part of the talk the overview is about underground mountain bases all of them should be made public in future talks I'll be giving latitudes and longitudes of every single one of these bases I've already written a manuscript at the publisher as we speak it's a dynamite book it lists all the secretive agendas that our government has us believing in right now and why it's so much BS why the New World Order is so good for us ha ha well don't believe it folks believe in only one thing love thy neighbor as thyself and ask continually questions about our constitutional freedoms and defend them if necessary and most of us will have to probably defend them I hope this doesn't happen now I'm winding up this talk as best as I can without my notes at hand but I'll be having artifacts up here you're capable, you're capable of looking at them I ask you not to handle them I want all the artifacts back on the table and don't handle the photograph here original photograph of the of the flying saucer in 1946. Now I'll take a, a certain few questions. I know there's going to be quite a few of them. Yes, this gentleman here in this row. I've heard of Project TARP. I don't really know that much. It's designed to uh, electrify the ionosphere and they will be able to map all the underground bases. Uh, there was a crash of a uh, uh, Air Force uh, plane up in Alaska last week and uh, AWAC plane. Yeah. It was on the last day of a right. uh, Project HARP uh, demonstration. Okay. Yes, I've heard of such projects. Uh, actually, it was invented by Nikola Tesla, the initial part of ionizing the atmosphere. The only trouble is with ionizing the atmosphere, plants, plants need nightfall as well as sunlight to survive. So, lighting up the atmosphere might do extreme damage. Okay, next question. This gentleman up in the front row. Please speak up. Yeah, man, thank you uh, for taking the question. My question I'd like to ask is this. If the aliens have a 1,200 IQ, can speak all these languages and are so powerful, what prevents them from just taking over? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> Basically, they have taken over. All that's left is a bunch of screaming, all a bunch of us that have been very complacent. Uh, half of the 131 under, deep underground military bases are basic cities for them. Right underneath our feet is a macabre site indeed. You can bet your bottom dollar they've already basically won the war. However, they're being an alien species. We are an alien species to them, and our germs have a tendency to kill them. <clears throat> they're also a dying race, and they're in far worse condition than anybody with the worst case of terminal cancer. They are in need of us to some degree. Yes, sir. 